So in the office, we typically talk about watches, straps, accessories. Um, today, we're talking about something a little bit different and that's cameras. And we have Leica versus Sony in the office today. So this could get a little heated. And I'm Kat Shoulders, your head of content, and I am joined today by Mr. Zach Weiss, our co-founder. And let's get into it. All right, so Kat, we, we both have our personal cameras here today, yes. sort of our casual walk around cameras. Though they're not that casual, to be honest with no. you. What's your camera? I have the Leica Q3. So this is a, a new to me camera, but very, very special because I have owned the Q system as many times as I've owned many of the watches in my collection. It's a camera that tends to go and come pretty frequently, but I think this one's here to stay and I'm kind of excited last words. to yeah. get into the reasons why, yes. <laughs> um, but what do you have? So I have the Sony A7CR here, which is a, a new camera to me as well because it's a fairly new camera in general. It only came out a few months ago. I got it the moment it came out and I've been using it pretty steadily since. So it's a I have a lot to th say about these cameras because yeah. over the last couple of years I've sort of developed my own interest in photography a little yeah. more and what I look for in a camera, which made this one a very interesting proposition when it came out that I had to jump on. Yeah, and I've seen your photography change just on Instagram, you know, in your posts over the last year, I would say, in particular, and the style of your, your shooting has changed and mm -hmm. has a lot to do with maybe lenses and your camera system. Uh -huh. So these cameras are vastly different in a lot of ways, including price point, but they're similar in that they're high resolution cameras. And a struggle for me has always been, do we need 60 megapixels? That's a great, do yeah. we need 60 megapixels? I don't know. No. I mean, I'm a professional photographer, shoot a lot of commercial projects here at Warner Wound. And I have to be honest, I'm not sure we do. Well, especially considering you don't use that for like the professional <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah, and this is so by far the highest resolution camera I've ever had. I think previous to this, I was maybe topped out around like 24 megapixels, which is more than enough megapixels yeah. for anything you would need. But what interested me about 60 megapixels specifically is because it's not just like a big number so you can be flashy about Spec it. It actually yeah. lets you do other things, which yeah. is why I really like it. And, and that, well, that thing particularly is really crop in like mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. So, you know, you can kind of take a picture and then figure out the photo after, which yeah. is not the way you're supposed to shoot. But I think with the tools that we have and what they do, that's, that's a style of doing it. And that's something yeah. I've found particularly enjoyable. Yeah. It's even like taking a photo, especially outside, you might find something you didn't realize you even photographed and then make that sort of the subject of yeah. a photo in, in, in edit. Absolutely. And honestly, like that is my style of shooting. I love cropping in. And so post-processing for me is obviously getting the photos into Lightroom, camera raw, and cropping in most of the time. I would say even 90% of my photos are cropped in, even if it's just micro adjustments. And that is why I do like having a higher megapixel camera because it allows you to kind of see the other photos that are also within that image. You might get a great landscape or architecture photo and then find mm -hmm. yourself like punching in even closer and closer to a building. Yeah. Same with people, uh, watches. And so I think there's a lot of flexibility and there's a lot more, I would say, room for error with, mm -hmm. with these cameras. And this one in particular, because I have the 28 millimeter fixed lens on this camera, which is probably the highest selling point is the lens on the Q3. A big reason that I bought this camera is to sort of master the wide angle lens, which I feel like I have a lot of room to grow in. And you got on the 40 millimeter today. So one of, one of the things I really look for is just compactness in my cameras. This body, the A7C body coming out with a high resolution sensor was just like this, this sort of dream thing for me because yeah, I don't, I don't want a cumbersome kit. I keep it, keep it in my backpack most of the time. If I want to walk around the city with it, I don't want like a big thing bouncing off my hip. It, you yeah. know, it's really just, yeah, walk around camera, but one that's also highly capable. Yeah. And yeah, my, my general walk around lenses is 40 millimeter from Sony as well, because it is about as small as you can it's get very from close. them. Yeah, very um, close to 28. I think it's only 1.8 inches tall, yeah. which, you know, full frame autofocus lenses, fast ones, I mean, 2.5 is not super fast, but it's not slow either, tend to be very large. So it's just a very nice body and it makes this a nice, a nice kit for what I'm looking for. I mean, this is my only camera really right now. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been like, I have an, another camera, but it's sort of been retired uh, because of this one. And I do use this now for, you know, some studio shooting as well, yeah. which is just something I'm also trying to grow my, my skill at, so. Yeah, I will say as far as uh, maybe watch photography goes, mm -hmm. your camera has me beat <clears throat> a little bit because you can interchange the lenses. 28 millimeter, obviously, this, this 28 millimeter that's on the Leica Q3 has a macro uh, capabilities, which is mm -hmm. awesome for watch photography, but I still find it's a bit wide um, and maybe it's just a personal struggle. I know 
lots of photographers who are actually nailing shots mm -hmm. with with the Q3, and that's what keeps me inspired to kind of master this what camera. Is, it is strange though, right? Because yeah. most macro lenses tend to be on the telephoto side. So exactly, like, and a 90, 100, 85. Yeah. Do you find you get distortion? You do get a little bit of distortion. I think that's just something that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to become more comfortable with in general. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I kind of like, I like the challenge of it though. I, right. I feel like it's easy to pick up a 40 or a 50 and nail a shot. It's not so easy with a 28. And if, once I, you do, it's, it's much more rewarding, I guess, for me. But I did want to yeah. ask you, so what are some of the features that really drew you to <laughs> <clears throat> Sony, because you were a Fuji shooter for a long time. You know, what I what drew me the Fuji was the size of it, once again. So I yeah. used to have an X-E3, which is just a super compact camera. Uh, and then it's uh, APS-C, so the lenses yeah. are even smaller. So once again, just a really nice walk-around kit. I used that with a manual focus lens, which was like a pancake lens. Yeah. But there wasn't that much room to grow, I found, in the Fuji line at the time. They just, they sort of, it's just their method, it's sort of different. Yeah. And I wanted to play around with some a company that had a larger lens catalog as yeah. well as full frame. Obviously this is the Sony catalog, which is also very open to third party lenses. So there's yep. a really like in, just a huge amount of lenses you can get for these. It's full frame. Mm -hmm. This one's obviously 60 megapixels. The body is honestly not much larger than the Fuji. It just really, it's, it's the grip. Small. So it is actually still incredibly compact. It has a movable screen. It also has internal body stabilization. Yeah. It basically has everything I wanted in a camera, just yeah. in a small body, which, you know, I imagine it does come with some sacrifices, only one memory card slot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think if you're a wedding photographer or a professional studio photographer and you're taking it out, you wouldn't be using this per se. It meant, but, meant more yeah. for the hobbyist or someone that does want to carry a camera every day. I have to give you some credit because I do think your your camera is actually more ergonomic than mine. Sure. I think Sony's are just built a little bit differently. <clears> Obviously, <throat> they sort of have the user mm -hmm. a little bit more in mind where mine is more design focused, which is great, but then also in hand can kind of be a pain because yeah. you, you don't feel as comcomfortable holding it all day long. But um, then and it's where heavy. Leica obviously really wins <laughs> yeah. though is though it's like there's a cult for it for, for a is. reason though because this is like a, a very sterile, mm -hmm. practical, photo taking thing. Yeah. And this is like this mythical object from a <laughs> mythical brand yeah. with a cult following and it, and it feels incredible in hand. Yeah, it feels know? like it's it's gonna last lifetimes and like it typically does, right? People have them and they, they hand them down. Yeah. There's something about like having this like chunk of metal that's and it's not built of plastic, you yeah. know, in a lot of ways. And you don't think you're gonna have to upgrade in a year or two years time, which you've actually upgraded recently. Yeah, so this was this was an upgrade I traded the A seven C for the R when it came out, which yeah, like I said, it just had the those a couple of extra features, mm -hmm. which just made it you know more tempting. It also has this really cool function, which I I hadn't even heard about before, uh, mm -hmm. which is called pixel shift, which allows you to actually take up to a 240 megapixel image uh, using 16 images and compositing it. I've been playing around with this, so we'll show you a photo there and, and just how much you can even crop in further and see these details and uh, you know use them as full size images if needed. Yeah. Just like it's just fun geekery for yeah. me. I mean, to be honest, that's what cameras are to me. Cameras are a Another, another hobby. I've owned everything from Sony and Fuji and Leica and now Panasonic even. And it's just sort of playing around mm -hmm. and seeing what you like. I've, I've really liked the Leica Q3. I think it's a phenomenal camera. It has its shortcomings. You know, they, they did improve the autofocus in it. We have phase detect now, but it's not anything compared to the Sony. The Sony autofocus is so quick, so fast. So there's there's pros and cons to each of these cameras. Do you want something that's gonna last you 10, 20, 30 years? Do you want something that you're gonna have to upgrade? Do you like interchanging lenses? There's a lot of different mm -hmm. things to look at. And I think that you know both of these cameras are sort of top of the game right now for what I would call your everyday carry camera in a lot yep. of ways. Mm -hmm. The high resolution, it's, mm -hmm. it's wonderful, it's great. I How's love it. How's your battery it. life? I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> okay, life. okay. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> mine, mine is a significant depreciation from the previous and, models. And maybe so, that's you know. it's because of maybe the sensors, larger yeah. sensors. Um, obviously, larger larger resolution. It takes a lot of power to take these these photographs. Mm -hmm. um, something else that we can quickly chat about is like editing process. I'll I'll be honest, like. I don't like editing these high resolution files. And what I found is I just started shooting in JPEG, or even like compressed shooting too, which mm -hmm. is which is awesome because you do in sort of in-camera cropping, which helps. And I, I think you probably have that feature as well. But I don't like bogging down my MacBook with the, <laughs> the editing of these files. And I would much prefer something in the 24 megapixel to like maybe 46, 47 mm -hmm. range uh, rather than the 60 plus. Yeah, they're, they're huge files. I've been sticking mostly to JPEG. It's also like my typical workflow when I'm walking around with this is actually to use the wireless connection to my mm. phone. 
which works better anyway with the JPEG. Yeah. But then Lightroom Mobile does not like big files. No, it does not. So, it does uh, not. So just yeah. something to kind of keep in mind if you're looking for a higher resolution camera. But I think these are keepers in, <laughs> yeah, I, in I, our, I'm in our camera it, collections yeah. for now. Let us know if you want us to talk more about cameras. I'll leave a comment down below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, and thank you, Zach, for coming on to chat cameras today. Anytime.